Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for our webinar about radon. I'm so pleased to see so many folks uh, joining us today to, to learn about this important topic. Um, this seminar is a part of our Indoor Air Quality Science webinar series brought to you by EPA's Indoor Environments Division. My name is Amanda Hong. I serve as the Radon Indoor Air Quality and Energy Star Coordinator for EPA's Mountains and Plains region, which is located in the great state of Colorado. I'll be moderating today's webinar, and in order to save um, your bandwidth, I'm going to go ahead and turn off my webcam right now. All right. It's my hope that by the end of today's session, every one of you will answer this very important call to action, which is to test your home for radon, fix it if the radon levels are found to be high, and in that way, you can save lives. There will be time to answer questions at the end of the presentation today. Please type any questions into the Q&A panel on the right-hand side of your screen at any time. If you need any technical assistance, you can submit those questions through the Q&A panel as well. Next slide, please. EPA's State and Tribal Indoor Radon Grant Program, also known as SURGE, has been working for over 30 years to raise awareness of radon and reduce risk of radon-induced lung cancer. 48 states, eight tribes, and two territories operate radon programs. And recently, EPA and our partners released a new National Radon Action Plan, which sets a goal for the nation to find, fix, and prevent high indoor radon levels in 8 million buildings by 2025 and prevent 3,500 lung cancer deaths per year. Next slide, please. EPA's website offers many resources to help everyone learn about and protect themselves from radon. Here are a few links to resources for testing and mitigation, as well as for buying or selling a home. And I believe we're going to put those links in the chat so you can click on them easily. Next slide, please. We encourage anyone building a new home to build it to be radon resistant. In fact, we'd encourage you to go for gold and try to get your new home certified or qualified as an EPA Indoor Air Plus home uh, by working with your builder. Radon resistant new construction is just one component of this Indoor Air Plus program, which provides comprehensive indoor air quality protections in new homes. Next slide. You can find many other resources in both English and Spanish available on our website, such as the ones pictured here. Check these out if you'd like to learn more about radon after today's webinar. And next slide. All right, it is now my pleasure to introduce our guest speaker for today's session. Bruce Need is Director of Engineering Extension at Kansas State University. Bruce has conducted radon industry training and has led K-State's role in the Kansas Radon Program for decades. He also has directed the National Radon Program Services effort for EPA since 2009. And I think we're gonna hear a little bit about that today. Please note that the presentation today reflects the professional opinion of the speaker and does not necessarily represent the position or policy of the US EPA. Today's webinar is being recorded and will be made available on our website at a later date. And with that, thank you again so much, Bruce, for being with us today. Over to you. Thank you, Amanda. Appreciate the introduction. And uh, it's good to be with all of you this afternoon. I'll turn off my camera now that I frightened you uh, so that you have that bandwidth. So this very brief overview of radon gas in homes is expected to be intended to be an introduction. Uh, and I'm going to cover a variety of topics. As Amanda indicated, probably the most important thing we can have come out of today is if you have not tested your own home, that you test your own home. And we certainly provide, hopefully provide that justification to do so. Here are the websites at, our, at Kansas State University. We have uh, various radon programs. The most important one is National Radon Program Services. Our website, sosradon.org, um, is a resource for the public. Uh, we provide these services under a cooperative agreement with EPA. We also provide radon program services to the state of Kansas through Surge. We have a radon chamber providing spiking and device performance and evaluation services, and have been doing radon training uh, as one of the original EPA regional radon training centers since 1988. Here's an overview of what I hope to touch on very quickly today. What is radon? What does it do to us? Why do homes have problems? How do we basically measure it? How can we reduce it? And additional resources. So radon is a fundamental atomic element. It's one of the inert gases, odorless, tasteless, colorless, inert, and the kicker, of course, is it's radioactive. It comes from the breakdown of uranium and radium that are present everywhere in the Earth's crust and soils. 
Indoor levels have been found in every state. About one in 15 homes, generally based on previous surveys, in, are likely to have elevated levels that can vary certainly throughout the country. But it is this unique environmental health risk that increases our potential for developing lung cancer through chronic exposure. Here are the typical outdoor levels of radon, 0.4 picocuries per liter of air, and that's the U.S. unit of measurement of radioactivity that we use for radon. The U.S. annual average in homes, indoors and living areas, is about 1.3 picocuries per liter, and soils can contain hundreds to hundreds of thousands of picocuries per liter, and that's the source uh, that is uh, for our, the radon we find in our homes. Incre exposure to radon increases our lifetime risk of developing lung cancer. That's it. It doesn't provide any short-term symptoms or uh, and our perceptual systems can't tell us how much radon we're breathing. All homes have some level of radon um, and the only way to know any level is to test. Radon exposure occurs over the course of a lifetime wherever we spend time indoors. And radon can cause lung cancer even below EPA's radon action level of four picocuries per liter. There's no safe level of radon. It's a unique chronic long-term risk. EPA has established a voluntary reduction guideline of four picocuries per liter. Um, we know that smoking um, and other particulates can increase the risk of uh, radon exposure to all occupants. Smoking and radon are synergistic and multiplicative in their risks. Here is a pie showing the sources of annual radiation exposure for the general U.S. population. And assuming an average indoor concentration of 1.3, you can see radon represents in the red section of the pie about a third of a, a typical U.S. citizen's annual exposure to radiation from all sources. The mechanism that uh, increases our potential for developing lung cancer is the emission of alpha particles from radon decay products, what radon uh, turns into uh, as it undergoes decay, and it can cause physical or chemical damage to the DNA of living cells in the lung. It's a unique environmental health risk. There are no man-made sources of radon, only natural occurring sources of radon. And so lung cancer is the primary concern. We know radon is a carcinogen from the studies done by uh, numerous uh, researchers and scientific agencies. What I think really characterizes radon as a significant risk is its studies of human beings, people, minors down through time, residential case control studies at different locations around in the United States and around the world, and exhaustive research has verified the relationship and eliminated other causes um, associating radon as a second leading cause of lung cancer and number one among non-smokers. So how does how do the exposures relate to you in your home? Well, minors received exposures comparable to what people can receive over a lifetime in a home at EPA's action level of four or other concentrations. And from the studies and, and aggregation of these uh, studies from around the world, the estimate has been developed of 21,000 people per year expected to die from lung cancer from residential radon exposure. So what are your chances of getting lung cancer? Well, are you a smoker? Have you ever smoked? Certainly is fundamental to that. But then what is the history of radon exposure? How much radon is in your home now? How much radon was in the homes you've lived in since birth? How much time do you spend there? And of course, genetic predisposition to certain cancers uh, may play a role as well. But it is our history of smoking and radon exposure that uh, affects our potential for lung cancer. The radon level we find in any structure or home depends on these five things. How much radon is in the ground near the home, the source strength. How easy it is it for the radon gas that's formed in the soil to move through the soil beneath the house? What are the air pressure differentials or vacuums that pull the house, pull the gas up from the soil into the home? How uh, tight or leaky is the house? How quickly and how much air does the house draw from outside when it's closed up? And how many pathways does the air have, the soil gas have from beneath the foundation into the home? These five factors come together to determine the radon concentration. Buildings create vacuums, air pressure differentials, and this is especially true when we heat our homes. Um, they are, uh, this, your house looks like the one on the left, but actually works like the one on the right. And this draws the gas from the soil into our homes. The pathways through which this Atomic element, this gas, can pass are shown in this slide. Exposed soil in crawl spaces, gaps and cracks in the foundation, utility penetrations, open sumps, 
it doesn't take much for a radon atom to find its way indoors um, through these pathways. So we can't predict radon levels by house age, heating system, foundation type, ventilation levels, presence of some systems, cracks, or other features. The only way to know the radon level anywhere is to test. We can't predict radon levels. So um, there's a home. That's a product um, that uh, probably the most significant purchase any of us ever make, the largest dollar expenditure. And warning, this product contains an unknown level of a class A known human carcinogen. Testing before buying is essential to avoiding exposure. Real estate testing is where most of the testing occurs um, for radon in the marketplace. We measure radon in picocuries per liter of air. One picocurie per liter per one picocurie is equal to the decay of two radioactive atoms per minute. If your home has four picocuries per liter of radon in it, there could be up several million decays per minute in a, a thousand square foot house with an eight foot ceiling. If we could make radon decays visible um, uh, in, to our eyes, if we were able to perceive it, um, we would be far more aware of this environmental health risk. There's no safe level of radon. Four picocuries per liter is the action level. Almost all radon problems can be easily fixed. We'll see that briefly here in a minute. And levels can get reduced to be to, to below four, many times to below two and even below one. And there are standards that have demonstrated success. Radon is almost always a negotiable item in real estate transactions as it's a defect associated with the property. How long, how long does radon testing take? The common test durations are short-term tests of two to seven days. A long-term test is three months to one year. Both short and long-term tests can give us accurate results and properly done, uh, especially by radon professionals, 94% of the time short-term tests should provide similar information regarding the need for mitigation as a long-term test. A key issue in short-term testing is put the house in what's called closed house conditions. This would be how you operate the home normally if you're heating or cooling. Uh, uh, entry, normal entry and exit is fine. Um, if there's a radon system, a uh, radon reduction system, of course, it must be operating. But closed house conditions and following the instructions with the test kit are essential to getting an accurate result. Here are the common radon test devices that are available to the public as well as professionals. We have single use devices like charcoal canisters and bags, longer term measurement devices like alpha track detectors, professional devices, electrode ion chambers and continuous radon monitors. And then within the last five or to six to 10 years, we've had consumer digital radon monitors. And these devices are not designed for use by professionals like continuous radon monitors that have been, uh, whose value, performance has been evaluated. But there are many consumer digital monitors uh, on the marketplace as well. And anything that increases the amount of testing that occurs is desirable. Key, key issue related to testing is whether or not we're in a real estate transaction or not. If we're testing our own home, we test in the lowest lived in level determined by you, the occupant. If we're in a real estate transaction, we're assessing the potential for elevated radon in the structure, not how someone uses it. And of course, in real estate transactions, we always recommend the use of an independent radon certified professional to conduct those tests as part of a home inspection or as a separate service. One of the issues that's been determined in Illinois and Minnesota is that test, if you test in only one foundation zone, and there are numerous foundation zones, as you see in this slide, you might have elevated levels of radon in one of the other two foundation zones. If only one test is going to be conducted, the basement is commonly the location that's tested because it's closest to the soil, has the most soil exposure. But that doesn't mean that in crawl space, above crawl spaces or in a slab on grade, you could not have elevated levels of radon as well. So if you're testing your own home, we certainly encourage you to consider testing in all if you have different foundation zones to test in, in those as well. So all of you should test your homes uh, and hopefully you already have, but if you haven't, encourage you to do so. The good news is if you find elevated levels of radon, there are standards and techniques available that can reliably reduce radon to less than four installed in, a, in one day by qualified contractors. They take effect as soon as 24 hours after the systems are turned on. And we have national uh, voluntary certification programs you see listed there that can be a source for individuals who can provide these services. In addition, you always want to contact your state radon program to see if they require certification or licensure or have listing, listings of uh, qualified radon mitigation contractor. The approach to radon mitigation is known as active or fan-powered soil depressurization. 
Um, this employs a method for creating a suction beneath the foundation greater in strength than what the vacuum the house naturally creates and other factors create applied to the soil by the building. Caulking and sealing is always helpful, but not a standalone technique. And ventilation approaches have generally in residential structures proven more costly and less effective than ASD, as it's known. Here you can see the most common kind of systems that are installed in homes. Outdoor systems where the fan is outdoors. Indoor system indicates where the fan is de uh, deployed either in the attic or uh, above living areas. Their standards speak to where the fans can be located, and they are almost always, they're going to be either outside or above any living area, never inside uh, the living area or beneath the living area of the home. We also have a need for a system indicator that tells us that the fan is operating. The fan runs continuously to draw the radon from beneath the home and bend it into the air above the home, as you see in the diagrams. Here's a couple of close-up views of system monitors and labels. These are the key consumer interaction points with radon mitigation systems. We want to see some kind of a system monitor that provides a visual and can also provide an auditory indication of performance. And as long as you see one side of this oil, either blue or red in these examples, lifted higher than the other side, that indicates the fan is operating and should be maintaining low levels of radon. You can also see other information and labels that help a consumer understand what the mitigation system is and how it's supposed to be uh, read and understood. One of the key concerns for radon mitigation systems is proper venting. And the ANSI R standards that I'll share with you briefly in, a, in another following slide, provide these guidances for distances for the discharge of this class A human carcinogen. I won't go through all these different um, uh, distances and what they mean, but you can see the goal here is to discharge above the roof, away from any opening that might allow radon to be drawn back into the, the home through a window or door. Here are some additional guidances related to the height above the ground or the distances that are increased because of the nature of the discharge cap, either a 90 degree cap or a rain cap that's put on these systems. We don't recommend rain caps, um, but if you do, you should follow the standards for proper venting and your mitigator, mitigator should know these. The good news is these systems many times take effect almost immediately. Um, you can start a post mitigation test to verify that levels are being reduced, have been reduced as soon as 24 hours after the system is turned on. You should test again wherever the initial test, pre mitigation test was done. Test within 30 days after the system is turned on, and it's recommended that you retest every two years to verify that levels are still low and check at least weekly or monthly that the fan is continuing to operate. This is a chart that shows in brown the pre-mitigation radon level, average 7.9 picocuries per liter, and in green across the bottom, a plot of the post-mitigation radon level achieved by this system, which was 0.9. This is excellent performance. You can also see that radon fluctuates. Radon is a dynamic environmental phenomenon affected by weather and temperature and a variety of, of driving forces and factors, it, but it commonly fluctuates within a range like you see here, Again, the average is what we're most interested, not necessarily the peaks or valleys. We can build new homes to be to enhance the chance that they may be radon resistant by incorporating techniques such as you see described in this graphic. I won't go into these in detail given the time, but again, if we uh, properly install a venting system when we build a new home, it may be possible for the home to naturally vent radon without a fan but a fan can always be added later on to um, uh, achieve the desired level of radon reduction. A passive system, as it's known, one that vents the radon naturally works because of the temperature differential between the air in the home, 70 degrees, and the soil gas. And if we properly design and install the system, it may actually maintain low levels. But the only way to know, again, is to test once the house is suitable for occupancy. A fan can be added. This is just an indication showing uh, a, rate, a fan in the attic, and many times the fan that can be added to a, a uh, newly a passive system, as it's known, um, is one of that has the lowest wattage, moves the least amount of air, and is the most economical to install and run. And then, of course, we would add a system monitor to let folks know that the system is functioning. Here is the uh, uh, website for the ANSI R standards. These are national consensus standards that have been recognized by EPA, and you can see all the different dimensions of radon measurement and mitigation in the different realms of existing facilities, existing buildings, and new construction, as well as devices that these standards address. So when you're looking for um, the most 
current information about how to conduct measurements and mitigations uh, in these types of structures, this is the resource to go to. And these are resources for you, our National Radon Program Services hotline, our website, and my email. Happy to respond to any questions you might have. And this is just a quick view of National Radon Action Month here at National Radon Program Services in, 20, in January 2022. 1,200 calls received, 427 answered from all 50 states. We redirect calls from uh, our hotlines to state radon programs if they would like. We sold over 2,800 test kits, did training, had a lot of email responses, and as you can see, website hits over 25,000 in January National Radon Action Month. Thanks so much for having me uh, share this information with you. I hope it's been productive. I know it was fast, and I'll stop now so we can turn to questions. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bruce. Excellent presentation. I really enjoyed the uh, consumer product safety warning, especially. I really love that. That was great. Okay, we we have had several questions come in. Just want to remind everybody, like the slide says, please put those additional questions into the chat feature now. Uh, we have seven minutes left, so we're going to try to get through some of these questions before we sign off. The first one we've got, let me get to the right screen. Uh, Bruce, where can people find guidelines with options and instructions for addressing high radon levels in an existing home? Um, certainly you can go to EPA's website, the Consumer Guide to Radon Reduction. You can go to um, sosradon.org and look up uh, mitigation, radon mitigation. Um, to find information and resources. You can go to the uh, Arst ANSI website. The, all those standards are publicly viewable um, and they're, um, they are detailed information about um, the best practices and recommended uh, uh, ways to reduce radon. Um, but the Consumer's Guide to Radon from EPA is a great start to better understand what radon mitigation is all about. Thanks, Bruce. And I'll just add too that um, if you're hoping to find a history of radon testing, some states require a disclosure of former radon test levels um, in a real estate transaction, um, but not all of them. And so, and really regardless of when that last radon test was, was taken, if, if it's not required as a part of your real estate transaction moving into a new house, really encourage everybody to get that done. And then every two years, go ahead and test it again, make sure that those levels are still low. All right, question two is, uh, Bruce, does radon infiltration vary over time? What would cause the radon level in my home to change? There are a number of factors that can change in a home that might lead to a change in radon. Radon levels do fluctuate um, within a common range like I showed in that one slide between say six and 10 in that particular house with an average of 7.9. But for example, if you insulate your home, add insulation, tighten up your home, replace your windows, change the ventilation rate. If you swap your heating and cooling system, that will change some of the pressure dynamics there. If you add on to the home, a new foundation zone, a new slab on grade adjacent crawl space. Um, if you change the foundation in some way, for example, if there's a flood or a drought, could lead to some changes because it changes some of the pathways in the soil. If you renovate the basement, put in a, a bathroom, cut holes in the foundation, you may create new pathways. Um, those are some examples of what might lead a ch to a change in radon concentration. Um, uh, if nothing changes, um, radon levels should be consistent if you tested every few years, if nothing, not, those kinds of changes didn't occur. Thanks so much, Bruce. Next question, uh, is there an average cost for mitigation? Great question. Um, I'm hesitant to, to say here's an average cost because it varies by the marketplace. Um, there, where there's intense competition, sometimes radon mitigation can occur for $1,000 or less. Um, if you have a complex home, it can be $2,500 to $5,000. Um, and so um, it does depend. Um, a key issue is having a system that's installed by someone that's certified, if that's required in a state, or someone that's voluntarily certified in one of the two national proficiency programs, because they're either going to be required to, or by um, adhering to a code of ethics, install according to these standards, which is most likely to achieve an effective rate on reduction consistently. Thank you so much, Bruce, yes. Are there discounted tests available? Um, and maybe you can discuss the possibility of finding free test kits as well. Okay. If you do, um, I encourage. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Sure. Uh, I encourage you to contact your state radon program. A number of state radon programs have free test kit 
uh, offerings for certain times of the year, like Radon right on Action Month. I know Colorado, for example, has done because they ran out in one day in early January and, and a number of people then purchased test kits through our website, which is intended for citizens to purchase their own. But check your state radon right programs first. Look online for the cost. Radon right test kits can cost anywhere from $10 to $25 short term and probably 15 to 25 long term. Um, and th that's everything, all costs included. When you buy a test kit, you wanna buy something that includes everything, shipping, mailing, receiving, the report, et cetera. Um, and uh, just read and follow the directions with that test kit, whether you get it free or you pay um, a very reasonable price for a single use type test kit. Perfect, thank you, Bruce. It really is inexpensive to test your home. Um, and that kind of feeds into the next part of this two-part question, which is, if you do test high, are there financial assistance programs available to homeowners for mitigation? And before you answer that, Bruce, I'll just say that, for instance, here in Colorado, uh, there is a low-income mitigation, uh, radon mitigation assistance program um, that's fairly new. It's just a few years old. Um, so there are some states uh, that do have those programs available. You'd have to follow up with that state program coordinator. Um, and I'll go ahead and find that link from EPA and drop that uh, in, in the chat box as well, because that, that's probably your easiest way to find uh, your proper contact. Did you wanna yes. say anything about that, Bruce? Sure, yeah, um, Colorado's a great example, but it's a rare, rare one. This has been the biggest challenge, especially if you tell people to test their homes, you give them a free test kit, they find high levels of radon, and now, okay, how do I pay for mitigation? Well, um, it, it's, uh, it's not much more than many other common home repairs, but we know it can be challenging. There are no sources of grants or funding, uh, significant funding that I know of from across the country to help with typical radon mitigations. Most often they're occurring as part of a real estate transaction. It's a negotiable item. Um, buyer sells, uh, buyer or sellers may pay for it depending on whether it's a buyer's market or a seller's market. But um, unfortunately there are not grants. My dream is that one day doctors will be able to prescribe a radon mitigation system as a means to, to reduce the likelihood of someone developing lung cancer. That's, that's what I hope might happen eventually. It's a, it's a pipe dream perhaps. Thank you so much, Bruce. I, I think that's a great question. Um, we do have more amazing questions and unfortunately we are out of time. Um, but remember, Bruce shared his contact information uh, we have uh, contacts on EPA's site. If you go to our website, epa.gov slash radon, you can ask us a question there. We'd be happy to follow up with you and answer all of your questions on this very important topic. Thank you so much again, Bruce, for your excellent expertise and, and sharing that with us today. And thank you to all of our present, um, I'm sorry, our participants for joining us today as well. We hope you've learned a lot. And again, answer that call to action, test your home today, get it mitigated if the levels are high and save a life. Great. Thank you so Thank much, you everyone. So much.